In this project, we're going to be creating some t-shirt designs and we'll make the t-shirt first of all. And we're going to use the mirroring option to draw half the t-shirt and then flip it over. So you only have to draw half, which is a really cool way of working because even if something looks a bit wobbly on one side, if it's mirrored to the other side, it looks like it actually should have been there. Um, once we've done the t-shirt, we'll look at two different designs, a really simple design, which is going to look a little bit like the inside of a camera, the um, aperture, the iris of a camera. And the second one, which is going to be more of a sort of a dark themed design, uh, we're going to do an animal skull and we're going to spin it around using repetition to repeat it in a radial um, way. It's going to be good. So I'm going to start with a new document this time. I'm going to be using CMYK because this is something that's going to be going for print. I'm going to go with A4, but I'm going to change the uh, the size, the orientation, shall I say, to landscape. And I'm going to click on create file. So I'm going to start off by making a t-shirt and then I'm going to have some designs for the t-shirt. And we're going to be using obviously repetition for that. Let me start off with a t-shirt. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pen tool to draw half the t-shirt and then make a copy and flip it over. So I don't want to have any fill on this. So I'm going to say none for my fill. And then I'm going to go to my pen. If you want to use any other tool for this and you feel comfortable with that, absolutely fine. And I'm going to draw half of my t-shirt. Now I'm going to just do it by going click, click, click and then across here, click and click. So this is kind of the shoulder of the t-shirt with a sleeve down there, into here, and here's the body of the t-shirt, and back along to the starting point. Now, if these are all over the shirt, if you've never drawn a t-shirt before, you'll find that like mine, they are a bit <laughs> all over the place. So if you do that, you can just use your selection tool, the direct selection tool, to pull these out to the sort of shape that you want. And let's say I'm looking for half a t-shirt here. So we'll make it, give it quite a large sleeve in there. Oops, a large sleeve in there, and I'll pull that down a bit. Now what I want to do is I want to round off a few of these bits and pieces. So I'd like to round off the shoulders just a little bit, under the arms just a bit, and the neck as well. So if I click on them, I can then use that little circle just pull them around a bit, do the same over here for the neck, pull that round to get a sort of elliptical, almost a V shape, and same over here, I'll just pull this round a little bit so we get just a bit of a roundness underneath. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna select it with the arrow tool, the selection tool, and I'm going to go across on the right-hand side to repeat. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a mirror repeat for this. So if I click on mirror, you can see it repeats it. And then all I need to do is I can use this line and move it closer together or further apart. Now, I think I will just pull that together like so. Right, so there is my, my T-shirt quick and easy to do. Have a bit of a go, make a shape like that, whether you use a, a mirrored shape, whether you use a t-shirt or any other shirt or any other clothing for that matter, doesn't matter. Just have a bit of a go with, with this. So, and then we'll come on and we will do the first of the logos using repeat. Now, I don't want to touch this t-shirt by mistake and move it around, so I'm going to select it. I'm going to go along to my layers and you can see there it is as a mirror repeat. So I'm just moving it into the right position and then I will lock it in there so I can't move it by mistake. Let's start off with the little logo. So what I want is a small logo on the pocket and I'm looking for something which represents a photographic type of company. So I'm thinking in terms of maybe the front of a lens where you have the apertures coming together and I'm going to make one little aperture shape and then I'm going to spin them around to do all of them. So let's have a go. 
I'll take an ellipse and I'll draw my ellipse out. Now it doesn't matter where you do this because we can always move it around. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it a bit easier. I'm going to take my direct selection tool and I'm going to select just the bottom point in there and pull it down like that. Now aperture blades are usually sort of curved on one side. So if I used the pen, I could click on that point there to put another point in and then use my direct selection tool to push that in to kind of get that rounded area that you get on, on a um, photographic aperture blade. Of course, you could just move these around until you get the right sort of shape that you're after. So I'm looking for this sort of upside down teardrop, I suppose, something along that line. If you want to just do a triangle, if you don't feel confident with doing a shape like this, that's absolutely fine as well. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to get it to repeat around in a circle. So I'm going to go over here to my repeat and I'm going to choose radial. So I click on radial and you can see how it's given me this radial repeat around here. Now I can then change the number of shapes in there by dragging that little button on the right hand side. Remember that circle that we looked at before? I can drag that up and down so I can get them to overlap or not. I can also go in to the circle at the top here and I can just rotate those around. So I'm looking for something maybe like that where they're all linked together really, really beautifully. I feel happy with that shape and now I'm going to stop. So you can have a bit of a go, experiment with those, just get some sort of shape going on with repeat so you get a feel for, for the repeat. Try it out. The next thing that I'd like to do is to take this shape and put different colors onto the different segments. Now, at the moment, this is still one, one shape. So what we need to do is we need to break the whole thing down into its component parts. So to do that, I'm going to go along on the right hand side here and I'm going to choose the object menu or object panel, shall I say, and then down here I can click on expand. And what that's done is it's broken it down into its component parts. You'll see if we look in the layers now, it's actually a group of those objects. Now to get to them, I'm going to ungroup. So in here in this little display at the bottom, I'm going to click on ungroup. And now each of those is a separate entity. So very quickly, I can go through here now and get some color. So let me go and get some color here and I'll just pick a few colors over here that I want to use. I'm not going with any particular color order. I'm just picking a few arbitrary colors in here. Once I've got all the colors in, I can have a think about it later on and see what I want to do with, the, with those colors there. Oh, I've got one of those, so let's go with an orange. And then I'm going to take those and I'm also going to remove the stroke from them to just leave that interesting shape. Now I want to regroup them again so I can work with them as one. So I click on group in there. It's a group and I can now work with it as one shape. I'm just going to hold down the primary touch to move it in there and pop it on the pocket of this shirt. Anyway, do have a bit of a go with, with that, rotating things around, playing with the colors, breaking it apart. So you use expand to break it apart um, and do all sorts of weird and wonderful things with that. And then we'll come on and we'll go on to another part, another t-shirt shortly. So I hope you're ready for the next one. If you found that one easy, the next one's going to be so very similar, but with a few extra bits involved. And we're going to take this onto a whole new dark level, not just because we're going to do a dark t-shirt, but the subject matter is going to be a skull. Anyway, have a look at this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy 
this whole artboard. The thing is, I don't want the little colorful pattern. I only want the t-shirt and the artboard. So I'm going to go up to my layers. I'm going to lock the group with the colorful um, pattern on it, and I'm going to unlock the t-shirt. Now, having done that, if I zoom out like so, I can go along to my artboard tool. So these are all the artboard presets. I'm going to click underneath the artboard on the little plus, and you can see it's made a copy of the artboard plus anything that wasn't locked on it. So once again, on this artboard here, I'm going to use my selection tool. I'm going to select the t-shirt and I'm going to change it so it's filled with black. And then over here, I'm going to lock it down so I can't touch it by mistake. And we'll start working on that very, very shortly. So get another t-shirt in and we'll then um, We'll continue on in a minute. Now we're going to trace over a photograph of an animal skull. And I'd like to do that on a blank artboard. So if I go back to the artboard tool again, now I've locked everything which is on this artboard. And if I click on the plus, it'll make an artboard over here, which doesn't have anything on it. So I can then work on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go and get a picture. Now, if you don't like my skull, feel free to find your own. I got this one off of Unsplash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along to my import, import files, and in the Illustrator course assets folder, there is a picture of a skull. Now you can zoom up, zoom down, do whatever you want to the size. It doesn't matter because we'll scale it around later. But what I would like you to do is to lock it. So I'm going to just lock it on here. But when it's locked, that little display at the bottom doesn't appear. So to unlock it, we can go to the layers and I can unlock it in there. So while you can use that to lock, it's a pain to unlock. But I think I'd also like to change the opacity. And a fast way to change the opacity is also in this little controller on the left side there. If I click on that, I can just drag the opacity down. It's one of these little sort of sliders where you get to keep dragging until you get to the right opacity. I think something like that would work. Um, so I'm happy with that. And I'll just lock that layer so I can draw on top of that. So <clears throat> once again, get your skull in. <laughs> that sounds so strange. Uh, bring the skull in and um, lock it down, take the opacity down, and then in the next one, we will start drawing this together. So let's get drawing the skull. I'm going to use the pencil for, for this to try and draw it, and I'm going to just zoom in. Now, as you probably guessed, what I'm going to do is only draw half the skull and I'm going to mirror it across because it'd be a lot easier that way. And this is a fairly good um, symmetrical object. It's not quite symmetrical, but we might have to juggle it a bit. So let me get my pencil. I'm going to start off with the thing that's right at the back, which is actually the, the skull itself rather than the horns. So I'm going to go along and I'm going to find a color, maybe a sort of a a brownish yellow color, something along that line. Maybe make it a bit more yellow in there. It honestly doesn't matter what sort of color you're choosing. Right, I've got something that I like, um, but I'm going to just flick over to stroke and get rid of my fill for now. So I can then start drawing and I'm just going to draw up over here around, kind of, kind of follow the outline very roughly over here, right the way down to the bottom in there. So that's sort of the first part of my skull. It's half the skull. And you'll see now if I go over to fill it, that's given me the first half of that skull. So I'm going to deselect that. Now let me go and do the horn. So once again, I'm going to go along and get the pencil, find an appropriate color. I'm just going to go with a much darker version of that color, maybe warm it up a little bit with some magenta in there, and then draw the horn in here. Now, that's 
getting in the way, so I'll move that. So I'm just going to draw it from here roughly around. Oh, now you can see the problem that I've got is that I can't see where I'm going. Now, that's always something that happens, which is why I usually draw with the stroke rather than the fill. Now, I'd love to say I did that just to show you the problem. I didn't. I, I honestly made a mistake. So let me do that again. So just roughly around here. You don't have to be too accurate. There. Okay. Um, and I will flip that over. So that's part of the horn. Now we need to still put in some details on this as well. But that's a good starting point. Now, so that I can see what I'm doing with the details, I'm going to take these two objects that I've got here and just hide them temporarily. So now I can go along once again in my stroke mode and just start to put in some details in here. Using the pencil tool, once again, I think I'm going to go darker still. And I'm just going to draw in this bit of the horn here. And then on the skull itself, um, I think I will try with a lighter, a lighter color. So I'm going to go back to a, a lighter version of the color, back to my pencil, and I'll just draw in a few shapes. So sort of roughly the eye like that over there. Oh, there's a funny bit that kind of goes down over there. There's a weird bit that goes over here. I'm not being accurate. I'm just sort of roughly scribbling in some, some shapes in there. We can even do a little tooth if we wanted to down the bottom. Right, let's have a look at all of those shapes. So we've got that one there. And if I show these ones here, you can see we've got the first half of the skull. In fact, if I, if I wanted to, I could even go in with a pencil tool and maybe just draw some little lines on the horns. They usually have something like that. Maybe something along that line there. Right, so give that a bit of a, a go. Draw half of the shape. Remember, you're tracing. This is not about your own personal drawing skills. So if you can't draw, it doesn't matter. And as you can see from mine, it's not actually that well traced. But because we're going to flip it over and use symmetry, no one's going to be any the wiser. And it's going to look really, really good. So get up to this stage, come back, and then we'll flip it over and see how good it looks. Now, looking at my design here, I'm thinking that it'd be really cool if I could just change the color of some of these uh, lines very quickly. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to select using the selection tool all the lines up here. But I don't want to select the skull itself. So I'm going to hold down my primary touch and click on the skull. So now I've just got the line selected. And then it means that I can go in here and I can change them all at the same time. Just have a look and see what works for, for me. And I'm thinking something maybe just slightly darker than the color that I've got there. Now, with this line here, I want this line to maybe be the same color as the skull itself. So I want the stroke to be the same color as the fill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the stroke. I'm going to go up to the little eyedropper and then move this over to the fill and that will pick up that color now for my stroke. OK, so I've got my colors right. Um, now what I want to do is I want to flip this over using my uh, uh, radial repeat. So I'm going to select it over there. And before I do that, I might actually rotate it around just a little bit over here until it seems a bit straighter. I'm not sure that it's quite don't think I've rotated much, to be perfectly honest, if at all. We'll see as we go along. So I'm going to take that. But before I do use the, the mirror, I'm going to click on the little button right at the bottom, which is the grouping. And I'm going to group it all together. So now I can just pick it up very quickly and move it as I need. Now, I have mentioned this before, and I'll continue to mention it. I'm going to rotate it. This time I'm going to zoom out a bit. And when I rotate, you see if I'm right over here, it's very difficult to rotate perfectly around. But if I keep holding and move my cursor right to the top, 
Then I've got a very, very big lever so I can get just the tiniest bit of rotation in there. So I'm just going to go through something like that. Okay, now I'm going to mirror that across. So I'm going to select it. I can just click anywhere because it's grouped together. Go over to my repeat and I'm going to choose mirror. Maybe I didn't get that quite right when I was rotating it around, but that doesn't matter because at any time I can still go to that shape and I can still rotate it in there and the mirror will quite happily follow suit. If you need to move things closer together, just use this mirror to pull bits and pieces in or out. Right, there's my, my shape. It's pretty much ready to go. Maybe a little line along the top to take away from some of that symmetry. So I'll use the pencil tool over here, darken down the color just a, a little bit and maybe just do a little line down there. Maybe that's a bit too dark. We'll adjust it a bit like so. Anyway, do have a go um, and watch that mirror and then you can move the mirror around and you can move the individual objects within the mirror as well. Try it out. So let's put our skull onto the t-shirt and I'm going to select it all. Just make sure it's all grouped together. If you've put in any more details, just group it again um, so you don't lose it and we'll move that across. I'm going to scale it down. I'm holding down my primary touch to make sure it scales perfectly in there. It's all lined up with the middle. Now I'm going to get rid of the artboard over here or the, the picture on the artboard. So in my layers, I'm going to go down to the image that I've got and I'm going to unlock it and then delete it. I'm deleting it because I want to keep that the file size down on this particular document. So we'll just bin that in there. The next thing I want to do is I want to take the t-shirt and the um, head, the skull head, and copy that onto my third artboard. And then we're going to do something else once again using um, uh, repeats with that skull. So I need to unlock the t-shirt so they're both unlocked. And I'm going to go along to my primary touch out to my secondary touch and just make a copy of that across to there. And once again, I will just lock those two black t-shirts down again. Get up to there and then we'll take that last skull and use some uh, repeat on that. So here's my skull on that the second artboard. I'm going to take the size down. So once again, holding down my primary touch over there and let's move it into the correct position. And then I'm going to go to repeat and I'm going to use a radial repeat. And you see this really cool pattern that we get in there. Now, once again, I can change the number of repeats in there and we can go in here and we can angle them around if we need. But don't forget, you can also go to your properties and down the bottom, we can change the number of repeats in there as well. So I can click in here and adjust how many there are that way as well. And also, if I have got them overlapping, which way are they overlapping? So if I increase the number here, you can see the horns are kind of going to the, the left side and I could get them to repeat the other way. I think I'd actually like to reduce the numbers in there and I'm going to scale this up over here and um, let's angle them around just a little bit so they're not touching each other like so. Right, I think that's pretty much done this, uh, this design over here. So <clears throat> I've got my three different designs in there and they are now automatically saved to the cloud. So if I want to go into Illustrator on the desktop, I can just pick them up off of the cloud in there. I hope you enjoyed the course.
Please like and subscribe for more of the same. If you'd like a free month of Skillshare and my courses are on Skillshare, just look at the description below. See you in the next one.